Hi everyone, welcome to Live Right Tonight. I'm your host, Kara, and this is our new friend, Katie. Hi. Uh, do you want to start by giving us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so I am 23. I'll be 24 here shortly. Um, I have my bachelor's degree in counseling and addiction studies. I'm currently looking into getting my master's degree That's so awesome. I can eventually open my own private practice. Awesome. Uh, how has like working with people in substance abuse and mental health, how has that like affected your life or what made you go into that field? So I had a close friend who recently overdosed and passed away. Um, Sorry to hear that. I have other family members, things along those lines, um, people who have struggled closely to me. I have watched my friends' families struggle. Um, I've just noticed how it has easily like torn these families apart. There's a huge stigma behind it. Um, I just felt like I wanted to do my part in making a welcoming environment That's and awesome. educating others and letting them know like they're not alone and just kind of making a difference in people's lives. That's awesome. And you don't have any substance abuse or mental health issues for yourself. So it was basically all the people that, you know, have struggled that you yeah. know. So awesome. essentially I don't have any substance abuse issues, but, um, I do struggle with anxiety myself, oh. um, so I do have a little background on that and know what it's like, but other than that, um, I'm just trying to be a helping hand to others. That's awesome. We definitely, uh, I feel like fighting the epidemic of opiates and just substance abuse in general being so high that it's like we could use all the help we could get. For sure. Um, so what was your experience like working in that field? Did you ever work at like a psych hospital or a treatment center such as this or? Yeah, so I have worked at Harbor Oaks in the past. Um, I did not work on their um, substance abuse unit. Mm -hmm. I worked on the mental health end, but um, due to like insurance and stuff like that, I had a lot of people come through with co-occurring disorders, so mental health and addiction. Um, it was a really rewarding experience. I ran groups with them you know awesome. just was like a listening ear right tried to provide like any help in areas that I was able to do so um I worked there for about seven or eight months and then I personally started to struggle with mental health myself and that's when my anxiety got bad and I made the decision that I needed to help myself before I could help other people Absolutely. because if I'm not in the right headspace I cannot provide services to other people without taking care of myself. Absolutely. So I um, parted ways from there and um, I just got a different job out of the field to get mm -hmm. me through like the last bit of school. And um, yeah, I, that's pretty much why I'm here now. Now well, you're here. <laughs> yeah, I've done the therapy route and everything like that. So I know what it is to be on that end, like yeah. receiving services as well. And I can say it's really helpful. So now that you are out of that that setting at Harbor Oaks, what would you say was the biggest pivotal point in your own, like how, what could you say to someone else that's struggling too? I would say to don't give up because my, I know people have struggled harder and longer mm -hmm. than I have. Um, but just in my personal experience, I probably struggled from January of 2021 until like pretty much all of last year was a mm -hmm. struggle for me but like it started to get better after about seven months I tried the medication route that didn't go well for me right I did therapy um at first it was on a weekly basis then bi-weekly then every three weeks um and I, that was a certain program I did I did CBT well, graduated out of that <laughs> I'm in a different um I just have a regular therapist now that I see on a weekly basis um but I would just say, like, be ready for help. Like, be open and honest. What you're going through is not embarrassing. Right. Everybody struggles in some sort of way, whether they believe it or not. Um, right. I would just say, really don't give up hope. Reach out to others. There are resources, whether you know where to start or not. Um, I would say, if therapy isn't your thing, even going through, like, an intake and saying, you know what, I don't feel this is right, but do you have other right. resources what for can me? I, what can I get? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Now that you're here helping us, you're going to start doing 
work with like our AOT program, correct? Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty um, excited. What, when working in these settings, have you seen the absolute correlation with substance abuse and mental health disorders? Because I know a lot of people, when they struggle with mental health, it ends up turning into a substance abuse problem yes. because of that self-medication going I, on. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Yeah, um, when I worked at Harbor Oaks, I noticed that many people that came through our doors, when they had co-occurring disorders, it was due to like self-medication. They didn't really think they had you know, anxiety, depression, bipolar, whatever right. it was, um, they just self-medicated and then, you know, their tolerance builds up and after a while it's like, yeah. I need that next whatever problem, it is, right? you know, it becomes a huge problem. Well, you are very insightful. That's awesome. We welcome you aboard. Thank you. Thank <laughs> um, you. Yeah. And thank you for being on my podcast. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for tuning in.